Well, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation today is from our gospel lesson, especially where Jesus tells the crowds, but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed, he may plunder his house. Here ends our text. My dear Christian friends, it's not for no reason that Jesus refers to him in the parable as a strong man. After all, it is the truth. Think about it. Yahweh created the man and the woman in his image. They were the pinnacles of his creation. Indeed, it's, it's only after, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but it's only after Yahweh literally dirties his hands to create Adam, Adam, from the Adama, the dirt, the dust, the earth. After that, after he beholds all that he had created, only after he creates Adam and Eve, does he declare it to be not just good, but very good. The man and the woman, they, they had dominion, authority, power over all that the one true God had created. It was very good. And then we hear some of the most sobering words in all of Holy Writ. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. This is the strong man that Jesus speaks of in our gospel lesson. The one who had once been the light bearer, that's literally what Lucifer means. The one who, in his pride, fancied himself better than Yahweh. And was summarily brought low, very low, along with a full third of the host who had bought into his lies. So he's brought low. And for whatever reason, this strong man then sought to corrupt the whole of creation using the man and the woman as the means. He succeeded. He succeeded because his strength lies not in, not in force, not in power, but in persuasion, in rhetoric, in, in convincing. He beguiled God's greatest creation with a mere word, a poisonous question, did God really say? And that one question was all it took for the man and the woman to fall into sin. Just that one act of deception, that, that one prompting. And the strong man set in motion all the corruption, all the evil, all the sin that we see recorded in Scripture. Every lie. Every act of violence, every breach of trust, every hedonistic indulgence, every dark perversion, every sexual impulse ever catered to, every slanderous utterance, every reverence to a false deity, every genuflection before an altar that is made only by human hands, all of it can be traced back to that first lie. And man and woman, they fell. And they fell hard. They were broken and the whole of creation was broken with them. And this strong man, he had the gall to claim this world as his own. This once good creation, he said, was now his house. And fallen humanity, well, fallen humanity, he claimed to now be his own 
possession. This would not abide. Not at all. Before the fall even occurred in His infinite wisdom, Yahweh knew what would happen. And He already had the plan in mind for redeeming His rebellious creatures, the man and the woman. And He declares this plan (laughs) and its outcome to the enemy, to the strong man, that He would send a stronger man to bind him, defeat him, and plunder back that which belongs to him. You heard those words in our Old Testament reading. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Words of great comfort to us, but originally spoken to the enemy. So the strong man knew that this was all coming, and he thought himself ready. So by the time of our text, he'd he'd already had some pawns in place to try and check this Jesus. As before, it only took just the slightest of suggestions, you know, just the subtlest of hints, just the just gentlest nudge to convince the scribes who had come down from Jerusalem that this Jesus was possessed by Beelzebul, that by the prince of demons, he casts out demons. And in his mind, I'm sure that he hoped that Jesus would have backed down. Maybe he thought that the God incarnate would would get a little bit flustered, slip up in his words a little bit. I mean, that's what he thought would have happened. Strong man, crafty as ever, thought he'd scored an easy win. And if this were any fallen human being, make no mistake, he would have succeeded. That would have been an easy win. But this is no fallen human being. This is the eternal word that he's talking to. And he is craftier. He is wiser. He is stronger than the strong man, and he, he is not falling for any of this. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end ludicrous. What a silly contention they put to him. But then he comes to it. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. I don't know this for sure, but I am I'm feeling kind of confident that when Jesus said that originally, and frankly, now that I think of it, every time since these words have been written, it sent a chill down Satan's spine. This man that he beheld, he wasn't like the gullible Eve. He wasn't like the lazy Adam. No, this Jesus, he's strong. Nothing seemed to deter him. Not the claims that he had in unclean spirits. Not the attempted influence of his blood relatives, his mother and his brothers. Not even the prospect of an eventual arrest, an unjust trial, beatings, scourging, 
being counted among criminals, the, the, the humiliation of that, and arguably the most excruciating form of execution ever devised by the mind of fallen man. None of that deterred him from his mission. Because that was his mission. That is how Jesus, the stronger man, bound Satan by being reviled, by being rejected and scorned, by his suffering, by his crucifixion, by his death. The words proclaimed to the strong man millennia ago came to fruition as Jesus breathed his last on the cross. And by yielding up his spirit, he bound the strong man. And as he walked out of the coolness of his tomb, three days later, the stronger man, he began to plunder. The good news of his conquest over the strong man spread far and wide turned hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. And the gift of faith that is bequeathed at every single baptism is Jesus himself declaring to the cosmos, this one right here, this one who's being washed, this one is mine. He has claimed us, you and I, to be His own dear possessions, plundered from the house of the enemy, well-earned spoils of a hard-fought victory. But the question still remains, what of the strong man? Doesn't he still pose a threat? Doesn't he still howl and roar? Doesn't he still claim some of the plunder as his own? Well, yes, yes, he does. This is not an enemy to be trifled with. Certainly not by us, poor, weak sinners. You and I have no strength in ourselves to resist Him. No, we still sin. We're still broken, still dividing. And if we were left to our own devices, we would run headlong back into the enemy's house. And that is why we continue to need the stronger man. This is why we continue to need Jesus. This is why we need to hear the gospel every single week because we forget it every single week. We continue to need Jesus to call us to repentance, to show us our sins, call us to repentance, and give us the healing that is found in the balm of Gilead. We need Him to keep us steadfast in the one true faith. We need Him so that we can continue trusting in Him because gift, faith is a gift. Just the very act of believing, the very act of trusting is a gift from our Heavenly Father. We continue to look to Him alone for our redemption. And we take comfort in the promise that He has given to us, to each and every single one of you, that nothing and no one in all of creation will be able to snatch you from His hands. We hear this reflected in a hymn that is very near and dear to our hearts as Lutherans. The last stanza of A Mighty Fortress is Our God. God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. 
Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news. Believe it. Trust it. Satan no longer has a claim on you. Jesus, the stronger man, does. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.